well, I let you guys vote for different mod ideas, and you really wanted to see nuclear power. So yeah, I thought I could just simply make my own rods that drop out of stones, and as you can see, they started to look like normal metal, because it took me forever to figure out why the textures weren't loading, and then the uranium ore ended up being like super shiny. In the end, I wasted like an hour trying to get the texture right, and I also learned about the secret at the bottom of a sunshake bottle, which completely surprised me that I didn't know this. Then I made a new custom game mode. Yeah, then there was just a lot of boring coding trying to make the stones drop from, I mean the uranium drop from the stones. Well, and as you can see, it actually ended up working and I even put on this confetti effect. Like, yeah, I did not expect this to work that easily. Okay, then I of course adjusted the glow more because yeah, uranium needs to glow. Then I started adding a really cool glow effect to the uranium rod and it, it just looks amazing. And you also really wanted me to add radiation to the game. So whenever you get too close to uranium, you start to take damage. And yeah, um, the baguette still looks funny AF. Yeah. <laughs> then we spent a lot of time adding a Geiger counter sound effect. I'll show you how it sounds in a second. But yeah, I also realized that my be right back screen um, <laughs> loads a page that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> well, the last thing I did was adding a uranium collector. Yeah, it works pretty okay. I mean, can't exactly put the uranium rods into it. Like you have to place them next to them. It's, I'm not gonna try making it work much better. <laughs> and I also made the damage stack of the collector. So it is super deadly. And now you can hear the um, sound of the Geiger counter. I'm just so proud of it. It took hours to make and it turned out really great. Let's just enjoy it. It's just a switch sound. There's also a random component to it. Like the sound effect is just a lot more likely to play the closer you are to objects. Or every chick if you're holding a uranium or a bar thing with your bare hands. And yeah, there's also a bug if I hop into the water and uh, the whole thing just disappears. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not gonna bother and try to fix it. Now, of course, we also need to do something with all of this uranium. So I did another stream. And again, you guys voted overwhelmingly for finishing the nuclear reactor. So yeah, first I was trying to steal some reactor model from the internet, which actually ended up looking really epic. Now, I just wasn't sure if I had the right license for it and stuff. So I think in the end, we agreed on using these large pie pieces. Some of you guys even made some models, but I think this was a little bit too basic. I don't know, probably wasn't even bad, but yeah, I'm sorry. However, by accident, I just loaded in this model. Yeah, I think it actually is not that bad. So I just changed the color to bright green and it looked pretty good. Well, then I was asking chat about uses for the reactor. Instead of just letting it generate batteries, we agreed on generating nuclear fuel rods. So yeah, I just joined the chemical texture and with a little bit of gimp magic, I simply, yeah, I just changed the colors to make it green. And then I slapped this perfectly legal acquired um, nuclear symbol onto the whole thing. And yeah, the result was looking really epic. However, then someone else suggested I should make a factory game, which led me down a whole nother rabbit hole. And then I accidentally activated. Well, nobody donated 50k, but I managed to delete all of my progress of modding back then. So yeah, never spam undo and redo shortcuts in Windows. You can completely destroy files that way. So yeah, I did a bunch of work restoring all the files I accidentally deleted. The funny thing is I did it in like 20 minutes and it took like two hours on screen making it. So yeah, now we've got this pipe generator again, which um doesn't do anything. And uh, the amazing uranium fuel. Uh, it looks really cool. So yeah, um, now it's time to think about, you know, making the reactor work. So I think my idea was just add a connection point to the uranium collector, but it would just simply connect a water tank to the reactor and the uranium. And then there would be some kind of UI where you can control it. So instead of consuming fuel, the reactor would just generate the uranium fuel rods for us. And then you have the slider basically to just to control you basically how fast you want to run the thing. And if you turn it to like maximum value, it's going to suck up so much water. It's probably going to start overheating quite soon or something. Because yeah, of course this whole thing will be able to explode and <laughs> nuke everything in existence. And yeah, once I have this done, I need to add a uranium engine and a uranium thruster. I don't know why I said I wanted to do uranium thruster. It's so dumb. You're not going to see a thruster. I had a typo, but the thruster to code is not even done in Lua. So, I mean, I think I can also yoink the engine UI for this and it should not be that complicated. Yeah, if I've done everything correctly, we've at least got the connection dots now. And I, okay, I should be able to connect the water and I can't because they're not all on the same creation. I'm dumb. Let's try this again. And yes, I can connect the water. That is pretty good. Oh my God, I can even connect the uranium. Like I had to add a custom connection type to make the uranium work. So I'm really amazed this works. Now do I need to 
you do some checking if you have two water containers connected? I mean, probably yes, but I think you can't also do the same with the engine. So I can probably just yoink the code from there. Uh, yes, I can just yoink this. Okay, let's see if I'm copying random stuff I do not understand works. Okay, it doesn't. It works. Um, I just had to replace the part. It didn't refresh, which is odd. But now I can only connect one water container, which is perfect. And we also should only be able to connect one, yes, one uranium container. All right, now we've got some UI. Yeah, our slider has 69 different levels we can have, which is, this is so overkill. But yeah, you can modify stuff like that. It's actually really funny. But yeah, the icon is missing and I know why. We need to generate our icons in the first place. Yeah, now stuff is looking much better. All right, now we have a battery icon. Uh, this should also work. If I grab myself some lovely uranium fuel, I should be able to put it inside of the reactor, which I mean, this is now the output. And guess what the stack size is? Guess what the chance is when breaking stone to actually get uranium? It's all 69, baby. You know, maybe I just need to, you know, fix the callbacks because whenever I just move the slider right now, there's so many arrows popping up in console. It's really funny. All right, it stops spitting arrows into console and it even um, saves the slider position now, which is uh, pretty epic. And I just realized what I want the subtitle uh, for anyway. Instead of saying our uranium go burr, yes, it can actually show you the heat of the reactor, which is gonna be important. Because if the heat is too low, you're not generating energy. If the heat is too high, well, we all know what's gonna happen. And yes, we do not use Fahrenheit for heat because the metric system is so much better. I think all the sliders just gonna do is control more or less how much the heat will increase and this how much cooling you're also using. Because I guess I can make a whole custom UI with multiple sliders, which would be a lot more fun. But if you know anything about making graphical user interfaces in Scrap Mechanic, you do know it is pain. It is an absolute <laughs> nightmare. I'm not gonna bother with that. I think I have a much more fun idea for the reactor. What if it always consumes all of the water in the container, basically? Meaning to control how much water you use to cool the reactor, you need to control the flow rate of water that goes in the water container, which you can do by using logic and vacuum pumps. And since they've made the vacuum pumps suck a lot faster, we can actually do have some like fun with it. And then it's gonna be a lot more fun trying to control the heat of the reactor. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. That's gonna be cool. Well, don't ask why this took me so long, but now you um, can't start the reactor if you didn't connect it to uranium first. So yeah, that's what I'm working on right now, making it consume the uranium so the heat can go up. And once the heat reaches a critical level, we'll start actually producing the energy for the uranium fuel. And if it gets too high, boom. All right, I think I got it working that the um, heat should increase. Yeah, let's just put in some uranium in our reactor. We can turn on the reactor, but we are not actually consuming the uranium, it seems. Ah, I think I know why. I probably need to um, replace the reactor. Look, the heat keeps increasing. And now the reactor, did I already burn all the uranium? That didn't last long. All right, let's try again. Did we actually consume the uranium? Answer is yes, we are actually burning the uranium, but I um, gave it way too much like duration. I mean, this is so hot right now, it would probably explode. But yeah, um, we just consumed uh, another uranium rod. Yeah, even at max power, I think it could last a little bit longer, actually. Or maybe not. No, I think this is fine. You know, this is like maximum power. Like we're already at 100,000 degrees. That's quite hot, actually. Let's give it some like natural like cooling effect. So yeah, you can see the reactor temperature is slowly dropping now. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need a new reactor. This one is like overheating like crazy. All right, so you can see everything can work in a more controlled environment. So now the reactor is basically just air cooled, which means at one point we're gonna reach an equilibrium. I, like the thing is, I don't even know how hot does a nuclear reactor run. Is this too hot? Okay, so I have read that the temperature is like 1500 degrees. We're at 2500 degrees. These are meltdown temperatures, so that's not great. I think anything from like a thousand to two thousand would be good. Maybe two thousand five hundred. And if you get uh, close to like three thousand, you're probably gonna make the entire thing explode. Like the air cooling can't even keep up with this, which I guess makes sense, you know? But this is just like temperature setting one. So yeah, I think let's add water cooling to the thing. Oh, okay. So the heat output is more like between 500 degrees Celsius 
degrees and a thousand degrees Celsius. So that's far from meltdown. I mean, not this. This is really close to a meltdown. <laughs> I mean, this is probably already a meltdown, but I'm not sure how the water should cool. It should like each bottle of water lower the temperature by like a certain amount of degrees? Or should it be like a percentage? Probably more or less like a percentage. Okay, so now if I add water to the mix, um, okay, like, I think I need to build myself um, a better, uh, oh, good thing I dumped all my uranium into the lake. <laughs> that wasn't really smart. Let's have our uranium container very far away from the actual reactor so I don't die of radiation. Yeah, then I just need to insert the uranium into the reactor somehow. I mean, the collector, of course. It's always so noisy, you know, holding uranium bars in your hands, you know? Right, then I can hook up the uranium to the reactor. Then I can also hook up the water container and I think it's time to power up the reactor. Right, our heat is increasing um, quite considerably. So let's dump some uh, water into the reactor. Um, all right, the reactor is getting quite hot. Uh, let's dump in some more uh, water and boom, we just lowered the temperature. Right, so I now have this big switch to um, turn on the cooling and this is probably gonna... Yeah, this sucks in quite a lot of water. Probably enough to cool down the reactor. Yeah, now our temperature is dropping again. I mean, this is way too hot anyway. <laughs> okay, now we're having even more water cooling and that... Oh my God, the temperatures are dropping like crazy. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, time to um, fire up the reactor more and oh my God, <laughs> we are producing so much heat now. That's bad. Okay, is there any way I can increase the water um, that goes into a reactor? I'm not sure how well chests work. All right, we have a problem. Um, I cannot use chests as T pipes because uh, I would need to actually give the reactor a pipe output. Yeah, what I need is a T pipe mod because else I can't get the cooling that I want. Except if I add, you know, the ability to connect more water containers, but that gets annoying. Well, okay, actually, I don't think it's that difficult and it's easier than adding a new whole pipe piece. And yeah, I, I probably, um, it scales way too aggressively at the moment. Okay, um, let's work on the ability to add more than just one water container. Container. All right, with this new and brilliant code, we should be able to connect as many water containers as we possibly could imagine. And a strange thing just happened. My T strategy actually worked. Um, all right, so the, the chest thing does work. Oh, it happens once all the chests are full. So you're actually building up um, quite some water buffers. Look how quickly water's getting into this chest. This is incredible. I mean, this is actually really cool. Oh, did we run out of uranium? Apparently, uh, Impossible. There should be enough uranium. Yeah, I still have uranium left. Where's the problem? For real. Why can I not start the reactor? Okay, um, it doesn't work because I'm completely dumb. Now it's gonna work, um, just as it should. And actually, we're having negative heat now. Sub-zero cooling. Yeah, um, okay, I know how this happens. But this is kind of concerning. Um, yeah, but all the pumps are working. So, oh my god, look how much water is getting into this. This is incredible. All of this water just to cool the reactor. I wish my computer would take all of this water because it's also getting really hot. There's 30 plus degrees Celsius in my room. I don't even want to know how much it really is. Okay, this should prevent a uh, negative temperature. Perfect. So with all of this fresh water, we can probably turn up the reactor quite a bit more. Oh, we already reached equilibrium. Right, we want temperatures between 500 degrees Celsius and 1000 degrees Celsius. And I think we can go up to like 2500 or something and then like we start to have a meltdown. So we would really want to avoid that. Okay, that's a lot of heat. Good thing we have all this cooling. Um, maybe we need to optimize the heat function a little bit more. I mean, this really now just controls how fast your reactor is working, because this is too fast. I think I want to adjust the heat scale a bit to not um, drain too much. I mean, this is already quite some beefy cooling, I would say. Yeah, this is producing like 30 water bottles um, a second. It allows us to operate at these temperatures. I don't know, some of this just feels really cool. Okay, I think I'm gonna put a percentage number uh, behind the heat level. Okay, I cannot have two lines. That's too much. Dang it. Ah, okay, I think this is good if it just says, like, status. And then this number would automatically update based on the temperature. And if it gets too high, you know, your efficiency starts dropping again, and then you get, like, a warning or something. Yeah, um, our uranium is uh, burning for quite a while. This is realistic enough, I think. Okay, um, let's stock ourselves up with enough uranium to last a lifetime. Because, yeah, the efficiency should now, like, update automatically and how is the heat not increasing up oh, there we go let's slowly heat up the reactor until we reach above 500 uh, degrees celsius at which point i can figure out that the ui is not updating oh i am dumb there we go now it's working so we're running now at 29 
100% efficiency, which, um, okay, I need to work a bit on the formula. All right, um, the efficiency scale is actually working quite well. Yeah, I've made it where... Why are we having above 100% efficiency now? That's exactly what I try to avoid. Dang it, math is complicated. Okay, now it says status temperature to low. Let's heat up the reactor, um, and I am getting arrows. All right, I think the arrows are gone. All right, it still says temperatures are too low. Let's heat up the reactor more. Now, once we reach above 500 degrees Celsius, it gives us efficiency, which um, probably is always zero now. Okay, that got fixed. Perfect. Now, as we continue to heat up the reactor, our efficiency is gonna increase up to 1,000. At yeah, okay, now I need to fix this bug. Well, if it gets too hot, it says temperature critical. Oh my god, actually, it looks like the cooling is just enough to prevent my reactor from a meltdown. I think the efficiency slider is now working, and yeah, it should rapidly drop the closer you... Yeah, this is perfect. So the best temperature is around a thousand degree, which I know is a little bit too high for a reactor, but I don't care about realism that much. You know, as long as we can play around with some fancy sliders, I think it's worth it. Right, so now we should be able to produce uh, fuel. Now, I'm not sure how much uh, fuel you even should be able to get out of like one piece of uranium. Probably more than just one, because yeah, um, okay, let me think about it. Let's put it at like up to five if you're burning at 100% efficiency, meaning up we just generated our first uranium fuel. It is working. Isn't that epic? Yeah, I mean, I also need to start producing waste somehow, and I'm not sure where I'm gonna, like, put the waste. Probably also want, like, a smoke particle effect for the entire reactor and stuff like that, but it looks like we've got a, um, well, a way to generate, uh, parts now that don't really have any purpose beyond, like, existing. And why is the reactor currently heating up? Oh, I think there's sometimes a little bit of lag happening in the, uh, pipe network or something. But yeah, let's see how quickly this thing starts to um, melt if you... T oh my god! <laughs> Do not turn off the cooling. It is really important. So yeah, we've got a working reactor now. I think that's kind of a success. Now, next time I'm gonna work on making the meltdown actually work and I'm gonna add nuclear items. Like a nuclear engine so you can have nuclear-powered cars and yeah, welcome to the future from a century ago.